Welcome back to Glamour Unfiltered, hosted by me, Josh Smith. And today, we are joined by the Emmy Award winning queen herself. It's Jodie Glamour! <laughs> you always give the best intros. I mean, you've got the CV for the intro. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> She's got receipts. Thank you. We are here today to talk about Talking Heads, which is this amazing new series that's coming to BBC. I've seen it, and let's get real, it's like a 45 minute tour de force in acting from you. And it was so hard, like, I remember finishing the day and being like, that is without a doubt the most difficult thing I've ever done. So it's something I definitely feel proud of. I also love the fact that you <laughs> that's the most difficult thing you've done, and then most people on screen would be like, so murdering X number of people wasn't the most difficult <laughs> thing, or like, how... <laughs> You know what it was? It was the concentration. And mm -hmm. I think there was like 20 pages of dialogue. Um, and obviously we shot it within the lockdown. Rule, new rules and regulations, less people on set. There was like one other person on set with me at any given time. So the set was deadly, deadly silent. But one of the things I loved about this is this character, Leslie, who you play, she's kind of this actress who has got wild ambition. She wants to be the top of her game. Um, yeah. Possibly finding it very tough to get to that <clears throat> position. And yeah. I was just wondering, like throughout your career, has there been a time when you felt like something was gonna be your big break? And you were like, this is it, honeys. And then it didn't happen. And then how did you deal with that? I feel like they all make up to that big, big break. I mean, obviously Killing Eve was was huge and I'm always I think I'm more of a pessimist I'm always a bit like oh no one's you know oh god you know you you worry more I think than going wow <laughs> this is it guys I've made it <laughs> it's <always laughs> more like oh my god like everyone's gonna hate it that I'm never gonna work again like I mean of course like you do things and they and you put so much into them and not everything lands well, you mm. know? It's not like every everything you do is a roaring success and that's okay. And I think as long as you go into something with integrity and you know the reasons you're doing it and why you believe in it, it doesn't matter if, it, if it's a bit of a flop because you, you have stood by your convictions and, and you believe in it and then it, it, it never really matters whereas I think if you get into something for the wrong reasons and then it doesn't go well then then you've got to answer to yourself because I think that idea of having having to be authentic is mm -hmm. such a discussion right now being an authentic person being an authentic actress doing the right things making the right decisions for you but I guess as well like you also have this self-critic that's like sat here all the time mm -hmm. how do you yeah. What is your relationship with your self-critic like? You know, I'm better with dealing with that kind of critique of myself, like because I feel I feel confident in what I do and, and I believe in what I do and I I kind of trust my strengths. Whereas if it's something more personable, like your self-esteem or, you know, what people think of you or reading things online that aren't true or those, those kinds of things, it's harder for me to um, kind of put my big girl pants on and be like mm. no also depends on the time of the month josh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. quite honest with you <laughs> yeah we're always going to criticize ourselves in different ways right like there's always going to be a time you yeah. can be like oh my god i'm not feeling like i'm not being that positive penny today or i'm not giving enough today or i'm not giving and i think it's almost like we always have to stop apologizing for ourselves right i think and especially i think people are more accepting of that now as we're all kind of going through the same thing but are separated. Where has been a time when you've literally in your career possibly not had that self-belief and you've picked yourself up and you've been like, Jody, get this together. For me now is a little bit different, but like you might go to 30 auditions, 40 auditions before you get a yes. So actually, you're constantly having to pick yourself back up. Mm. You know, you go to you go to an audition on the Monday, you don't hear anything. You go to a different audition on the Thursday, the following Monday, oh, you didn't get that, and you didn't get this one. Okay, <laughs> like learning not to take it personally, and then going to your next meeting and not carrying that with mm. you. And I and 
I think or whenever I got not got a role and watched the the thing that I auditioned for, I'm like, ah, see why I didn't get it, you know. But then it's it's so easy to to go, oh God, was it the way I looked? Was it my acting? Was it too much? Was it you know? It's um. So I think the key is to try and not take it personally. Yeah, you're not always going to be someone's cup of tea either. I mean, sometimes they like a milky tea. Sometimes they like it with one sugar. That's what I mean. I don't want to be someone's milky tea. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Make peace with it. Move on. But like, I think as well, with that, there's, and Leslie, the character in Talking Heads as well, she puts so much pressure on herself. um, Yeah. To like, so much like over the way she looks, over the way she does a scene, over the way she's going to achieve things. Like, how much pressure and what kinds of pressure did you put on yourself at the beginning that you don't necessarily put on yourself now? Oh God, I think the the notion of like, you know, wanting everyone to think I'm great or good at what I do, um, or the expectation to say the right thing, um, I think is what I'm getting much, much better at. Um, Because obviously when you come into it, you're like, you're an open book and and you're so eager to please. And then the more you go on, you're like, oh, it's it's not the way the world works. Um, And I'm definitely by no means there. And I don't think you ever will be, but I'm definitely more better at going, okay, it's someone's opinion and that's not going to affect my choices or what I do next or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I guess just trying to keep a strong head, strong head about you. Do you think there's more respect in that sense for your voice as well? You always have to prove people wrong or, you know, people are like, that was really good or wow. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you just have to kind of... Yeah. <laughs> I did a theatre play when I was like 16, but I um, got the part, yeah, and I was going for the audition and the character was um, middle class, RP, very well spoken, very wealthy family. And and I got there and it was obviously must have been the only scouser or yeah. and definitely girl from the north northwest of England. It wasn't until I got the part that the director had told me that before I went in, she was like, why Why have we brought her in for the audition? Because she's seen where I was from and she didn't, she didn't, um, she didn't think that I was capable. And I got it. Yes, she did. And I, when she told me, I was like, wow. And that's another thing I think is really interesting because you just never know what's going on the other side of that door. Because I was from Liverpool, she didn't think I could do it could do an RP accent. But that's kind of just so annoying because that's also like, we're talking, like, that's so classist as well, isn't it? It's like... Oh, completely. So many, so many meetings are like, can you, can you lose that? <laughs> like, yes, I can. <laughs> the time here. Um, but maybe it's just because it's so strong, but I think it definitely is a, a, a classist thing. And I think it's something that is like, is ingrained in you without you even knowing like at Stephen mm. Gray and like I always talk we you know, mean Stephen have talked about it before it's like this imposter syndrome of like because of where you're from you feel so lucky to be where you're at and it's like well actually no you have as much you know right to be there as anybody else with with any other, other kind of background and I think also with this this 45 minutes of this show Mm-hmm. where it's all about she touches a lot on like the audition process and what she's been through and the trials and tribulations mm-hmm. of that for you personally can you remember a time when you've done an audition you've been like this is the absolute pits like this like <laughs> this this is this is the worst of the worst moments for me or a time when it's messed up and you've been so desperate for it to happen i remember it from my where we were, when i was with my old agency i was I got a train to London to do an audition for a, I can't remember what it was, but it was some sort of theatre production that had dance in it. And my train got delayed and I was like probably 45 minutes late to this audition. And when I got there, it was like a dance workshop. 
And there was already like 30 girls in the room learning the choreography, you know, like very kind of fame, chorus line-esque. I was like, <laughs> walked in with my bag, like sweat dripping off me. And they were like, just just go to the back and, and, and kind of follow, follow the routine. And then of course they like bring you to the front in groups of four to then show. <laughs> it was just terrible. The worst thing is I must've been about, I was with my old agency, so I must have been about 15, 16 at the time. Mm. Of course, it's it's wonderful to be in a position where like if people have material, they're like, would you like to do this? Or we're thinking of you like that's them. You know, that's always where you you aim to be. But I think there is something about going into an audition room. Knowing all of your business and then having the confidence of going, I understand this character. This is how I feel. This is what I've made. Where you're just like, <laughs> yeah. Well, you also know that you've you, you've understood it, and and you're on the right you're on the right track. Whereas, of course, if you, you if you get offered something, it's like that. Well, the first time you're gonna actually do a scene is probably on day one if you don't have rehearsals, and then you're like, what if they're like, oh my god, we've cast the wrong girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, but of course, it's all insecurity, like you say. It's like that little voice in your head that is constantly thinking that something something's going to be kind of swept from under your feet or you know do you still feel like that yeah yeah i don't think that goes away and i kind mm. of hope it doesn't like i would never want to be i would never want to get to a point where i feel settled um because actually i think one of my driving forces is being scared to do something because i mm. think then you know that you're challenging yourself and then you're only going to grow from that because I guess that shows that there's so much power in this mm. idea of leaning into your insecurity, right? Have you learned mm. that? For me, that it that is acting. Like you, you put so much of yourself out there, all of your vulnerabilities, mm. um, and actually, I think that can be quite cathartic. You know, like uh, some days, you know, you might have a big kind of emotional day on set. And yeah, some days you might go home absolutely exhausted, but then it's kind of like a weird release it's kind of like free therapy isn't it like when you <laughs> yeah. just like i'm just gonna let out all this weird emotion that's going on in my head right now and i'm just gonna yeah. yuck it into this character <laughs> she can deal with it and i can leave her alone and i'm gonna go away yeah, yeah. it's like you might do a, you might do a crying scene and then <laughs> they'll cold cut and then like for a minute after you're like, <laughs> you're like are you okay and you're like yeah i just but i think like emotions just fascinate me like and of course, that's what, that's what you deal with when you're when you're acting. So I think it's a good message to say to people that there is actually power to be found in your vulnerability. Oh my god, absolutely, completely. I mean, because we all are vulnerable in our own little ways, and I think that when you know, when someone, when you feel comf in a comfortable enough space to open up, and someone else does, like that connection is so lovely. Like I feel like it only draws. You closer to people and i guess this like social media like everything's great you know no problems here we we lose that ability to kind of connect with each other do you feel like there's you've tried to like safeguard your identity and yourself that you don't get overwhelmed by this crazy situation that you've been placed in like my family and my friends would put me in my place yeah like like off the bat and I've made peace with this. Like, this is the career I chose. This is the job that I love to do. Like, but there is so little about this kind of career, this life that you have control of. One of the stories when we spoke last time that you told me, which I just loved so much, is when we were talking about when you had your like hangover shifts in Tesco's and you yeah. were like loving life on those checkouts slash not loving life <laughs> on those checkouts. And I yeah. wondered if you were a customer, no, what are you going to ask me now? <laughs> shimming up to that girl at the checkout and you could give her one piece of advice. What would you want to give that girl at the checkout? I've always had such a strong idea of, of, of what I want to do and what I don't want to do. Um, and don't get me wrong, sometimes I've, you know, especially as, as, 
you know things get much bigger it's so easy to kind of get swamped up in it all and and kind of get a little bit off track but i think it's just yeah keep doing what you're doing and you know i i also had like when when i was that young and you know doing jobs here and there like i'd have people say to me like well like are you like you think you're going to be in films like what are you going to do if that doesn't work out and i'm like not gonna like can't even think about like that's not gonna happen you know um so when i think back to that response i'm like good for, like good for you um pat that girl on the back yeah but maybe not the girl on the check <laughs> <I'm the laughs> i would be like maybe don't go out three nights on the weekend a little bit more sleep um would probably be the advice actually well, I think if the girl in the checkout knew you were going to end up in the last duel with um, Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah. And then Affleck, they'd be like, whoa, she fancy. Yeah, they'd, be, <laughs> they'd be like, this girl? <laughs> well, babe, it's been amazing speaking to you, as always. Me too. It's like the best. <laughs>